This is terrifying. I'm your host, Steve Van Meter, and thanks for joining me today. Our lead story today, the economic nightmare now hits small businesses. And I want you to understand why just a few, only a few small businesses are going to survive, and you're not going to believe why. Plus, we're seeing signs now that the mythical soft landing is fading quickly into the sunset. And if you're wondering what we're doing in Florence, Italy today, it's not just to get some tasty pizza, it's to find out what went wrong with the Italian manufacturing sector. Plus, we have a sponsor for today's show. They're a new age media entertainment company, one unlike any that you've ever seen or we've ever featured on this show. And we're gonna show you why we think their stock price could move up by as much as 60% as it comes out of a supply zone. Be sure to stay tuned to the end of the show or check out the pinned comments or description below for more information. Now let's head over to Bloomberg where we pick today's story up in the headline, Asia's manufacturing downturn deepened amid depressed demand. Now this is a headline that we wouldn't expect to see because all we've been hearing about from politicians and policymakers and central bankers is we're going to have a soft landing. And that means it should be already over. There was she rebounding out of this. We've been making the continued case on the show why demand is going to get weaker. And now we're seeing it in Asia. And I want you to understand that here in America, we get a different perspective. So when the slowdown actually gets here, it's already started out in the East in Asia. And that's why what's going on over there is absolutely critical. Factory activity in the region mostly worsened in September. Again, this was not supposed to happen as lackluster global demand for goods drove a decrease in output and new work. Japan's PMI slowed slightly to 48.5 last month from 49.6. That means it's as it falls even further from the 50 mark that separates an expansion from contraction. So what we're seeing out of the Japanese economy, the manufacturing sector, is a continued slowdown. And this is not a good sign because the hope here was the global manufacturing sector had bottomed out and was going to rebound. We told everyone, look, don't get it too excited here. This is just a dead cat bounce. It's gonna roll over and head lower, and now we're seeing it. And you think about the timing for this as we go into the holiday season for the global economy, it just couldn't be worse. Taiwan's gauge posted a sizable jump to 46.4 from 44.3 as still contraction, but a softer downturn last month. The global sum has hit the export oriented economy hard, keeping its PMI deep in the red since May of 2022. And so when you start to hear things like imports or exports are down, what this means is the global economy is slowing, it's shrinking. These are all signs that we have validated and said they're going to get even worse. The latest data flashes warning signs as manufacturing settles into its peak season. So you think about, and we've talked about the back to school season, the holiday season. If we don't see a rebound here, we're in big trouble. Now you've got it ahead of the Christmas and New Year holidays. It undercuts cautious optimism that the global economy is finding itself on a steadier footing with consumer demand and exports firming up in some quarters. But the question only is, is how much is firming up before we get the next leg down? You start to look back and you think, wait a minute, we don't have all the pandemic stimulus. As of today, student loan repayments are back. We know consumers tapped out on their credit cards and where there's a lag between when the Fed raises rates and those minimum payments go up. So you start looking around and you see the U.S. consumer who is under major stress and all this is going to do is backflow to the rest of the world's manufacturing sectors. And here we see South Korea's export decline eases further, adding to the optimism. We'll just say it's not optimism, it's hope, because if these policymakers get it wrong, we're heading into a global recession at best, perhaps even a global depression here, as shipments adjusted for working day differences decreased a mere 2.1% from a year earlier. The customs office said headline exports fell 4.4% in September, compared with an 8.3% drop the previous month. Economists have forecast a whopping 9.3% decline. Meanwhile, imports fell 16.5%. So you think about internal demand for South Korea, it's going down, resulting in a trade surplus of 3.7 billion. So there was likely to see kind of this revival in the exports again, going into the holiday season, the hope that the US consumer would come back and spend. We're gonna make the case and continue to case that that is unlikely to happen going forward. We just don't see that the US consumer has that much money. We 
know, according to the Fed, the pandemic stimulus now should be nearly almost gone and we should start to see problems. Of course, that's where we're getting to the small business sector here in a bit in the show, because when you see what they're being hit by, it's going to put the U.S. economy in a dangerous place because we need small businesses and a lot of them are going to fail. Korean exports began to sink late last year as semiconductor prices slid and demand from China weakened. Again, internal demand from China, even extra, they need those chips, wasn't demand for them. And even higher energy costs and interest rates have also weighed on the global demand that South Korea depends on to power its economy. Exports to the U.S. did increase 9% in September. Again, we can note the back-to-school season holiday season, while those to China gained for a second month. But South Korea is one of the world's largest exporters, but with its manufacturers embedded in a wide swath of global supply chains. Its exposure to global trade makes the nation a useful indicator for the health of the world economy, which is why we like looking at countries like China and South Korea. Many people ask, why do you focus on that? Because it tells you what's coming to America. We know when the good the demand from the U.S. goes down, we first see it in the manufacturing sectors in countries like China and South Korea. Korea, and that's where we're looking for. We're looking for the revival here, and we're just not seeing a whole lot of it. But now let's turn to Italy, as its factories are seen trapped in a recession with no way out. And this doesn't make a whole lot of sense either, because what have we been hearing? That it's just Germany's economy that's in trouble. It's not going to affect the rest of the Eurozone. And we kept saying, no, it's going to. There's no way that the German manufacturing sector can go down and not impact the broad Eurozone. It's just not possible. And here we see in Italy now, they can't turn it around. An index based on responses from the purchasing manager stood at 46.8 September. Remember, that's a contraction. It's under 50 compared with 45.4 in August. So it contracted at a slower rate. Notably, the gauge showed improvement and exceeded estimates. Of course, estimates right now are just a rosy. The Italian industrial economy appears to be trapped in a deep recession with no clear way out. Now, that's not what we've been hearing. We've been hearing soft landing, economic rebound, maybe a small recession in 2024, but most likely we're gonna boom out of that. And now we're seeing what trapped in a deep recession with no way out. That is not the, what you wanna hear. New orders, both domestic and international, are shrinking, and even expectations for future output have fallen well below their long-term average. Now, you think about that, that's not a good sign either. And now let's turn to the U.S. We have data here from the ISM. The manufacturing PMI improved to 49.49%, still a slight, just a slight contraction, but an improvement. The U.S. manufacturing sector continued its contraction trend, but at a slower rate, recording its best performance since November 2022, when the PMI also registered 49% and then got worse. Companies are managing outputs appropriately as order softness continues. Now, that's something you want to hear about in terms of soft landing. That's not what you want to hear. You want to see order improvement, but the month-over-month -month PMI improvement in September is a clear positive. Demand eased marginally with the new orders index contracting, although at a slower rate, new export orders index continued in contraction territory, but with marginal increase. And here's one we will watch, backlog of orders declining, suggesting that perhaps they're chewing through that, and now they're gonna need to find some new orders here. So as we look to the US, it's no surprise that we kind of see the US being you know, the cleanest shirt in the dirty laundry basket here, because we get everything last. So you start to see the negative effects overseas, and then eventually they get here. I wanna make some cases why the US manufacturing sector itself is gonna see a downturn. Of course, that's gonna impact a whole lot of small businesses, on top of the problems they're already seeing. And here we can take a look at the survey. And I want you to understand that if we look at the headline PMI, there's all this hope now, it's at 49, because that means we're one point away from 50. That means we could be in an expansion starting next month. But we've been in a contraction for 11 straight months. New orders contracting for 13 straight months. Now, granted, it's improved a little bit. It's at 49.2, meaning it's almost stopped. The, the, the downturn in new orders appears to be stopped. But again, I'm telling you, that's the whole 
holiday and back to school effect. Look at employment. Now it's up to 51.2 from contraction in the prior month, showing the manufacturers here a bit optimistic, but notably, we see prices 43.8. You know, this is your inflation component. We know traders and hedge funds, they want to drive interest rates higher, but here we're seeing prices coming down, feeds back into the consumer price index at some point. That means CBI coming down, eventually interest rates turn, but you'll note decreasing at a faster rate, suggesting that indeed inflation's coming down. How about that backlog of orders, 42.4. I mean, they're just churning through these things at an even faster rate now with a 12 month trend that at some point these backlogs get wiped out and then what happens next without sufficient amount of new orders then the employment sector starts to go these layoffs start to happen and that's not a good sign for the u.s economy let's take a look at what's going to bring of course the general business activity down in the u.s manufacturing sector here we've got the diffusion index for the philly fed their general activity index that's shown in blue anytime the blue line's above the black line we see the general expansion below a contraction and this is against a nominal broad u.s dollar index and the case we're making here is as the dollar heads higher which there's a lot of people trading the dollar we cover that on sunday's show that puts downward pressure makes the u.s manufacturing manufacturing sector not very competitive that means this is likely to go down further as you can see in the past the relationship between the dollar and the u.s manufacturing is very clear but how about imports we look at imports into the u.s as demand from the u.s consumer and there was this big pop in new orders and everyone got excited and said look this is the end and we said nope it's not it can turn around and go down look at we see imports of goods and services that's a leading indicator here of where the manufacturing sector in the u.s is going there was just this hope again heading into the holiday season and now that's going to be dashed but as we get to our headline story, small business bankruptcies are now rising at the worst pace since the pandemic and new signs of economic distress signal no soft landing for many entrepreneurs. So you start to think about the impact this will have on the economy because small businesses, when they run out of money, they don't have you know the big balance sheets like these big corporates. They don't have the ability to go to the banks and get anything they want whenever they want. They can't just go issue a bunch of new shares. And so what happens when things get worse for them is they're gonna be forced to lay off, they're gonna be forced to discount prices and clear inventory to bring cash flow in. Again, we're talking about all things that are end up being deflationary. The increased bankruptcies are coming from filings under some chapter five, a newer provision in federal bankruptcy code that makes it easier for financial stress small businesses to restructure. Nearly 1,500 small businesses filed for subchapter five bankruptcy this year through September 28th, nearly as many in all of 2022. So we're seeing an increase and we're not at the end of the year yet. Bankruptcy petitions are just one sign of financial stress. Small business loan delinquencies, which we keep an eye on, and though broadly the delinquencies and defaults have edged upwards since June of 2022 and are now above pre pandemic averages. And of course, we've made the case before. Why do you start to see delinquencies and eventually defaults rise? It's because a lot of these businesses continue to finance their debt over and over again. And as they expand, they just borrow more money. But when the banks start curtailing lending by tight lending standards what that means is access to credit goes away now all of a sudden these small businesses who need more money to survive well, they can't get it and that means delinquencies and eventually defaults and index tracking small business owners confidence ticked down slightly in september driven by heightened concerns about the economy according to a survey of more than 750 small businesses 52 percent of respondents believe the country is approaching or in their recession of course that means for small business owners having the pulse that the court we know the central bankers don't still needed capital is more expensive to access thanks to higher rates and can be difficult to obtain to say the least small businesses now have fewer options for raising capital than bigger companies as i said which can issue stock or bonds or go to private equity investors to get other sources of funding putting these small businesses in a position where they've got to try to restructure here try to stay afloat if they can't make it then they're going to start laying people off clearing out their inventory and if that doesn't work they're going under and here's the key they think we're maybe in a recession. Many of you think so too, but we're not there yet. Just tells us how bad things are likely to get. And here's a big problem. As we look at the delinquency rate, 
We'll come back to the Philly Fed chart here showing general business activity as we stick with that theme for today's show. And here we can see delinquency rates in red. Anytime over that horizontal black line, they're increasing. And sure enough, when people can't pay their bills, guess what they're not out doing? And that means they're not out spending on new stuff for sure. And you see that here again going into the dot-com bubble, the same in the global financial crisis. We're seeing it now in the delinquency rate. We don't get that every month. We get that every quarter, suggesting that that new order index is indeed headed lower. And how about this? We talk about accessing credit for small businesses. And sure enough, we look now at the net percentage of domestic banks tightening standards for commercial and industrial loans to firms of all sizes. This shown in blue, or this shown in red, against the Philly Fed diffusion index for the general business activity. That's the one in blue, both of the baseline and zero. So when you see here banks tightening lending standards, as we see it coming down here in the 1990s, what happens? You don't get the new orders. Why? Because the businesses can't get credit to fund the new orders. There's no demand there. Consumers don't have the credit to fund the new orders. And next thing you know, they go down. You see that fact happen here again in the dot-com bubble. How about the global financial crisis? It's a repeat. And now everyone says U.S. economy, soft landing. It's going to rebound. New order demand is going to spike. And we're saying, look, as long as banks keep tightening lending standards, it's not going to happen. It is not possible. We're not creating a new muff, new money to create growth. But one thing that we think is going to create a whole lot of growth is QU, our sponsor for today's show. Again, they're a new age media entertainment company. Let's check them out. All the information's in the description and the pinned comment below. You can find them online because they are indeed the experts. You can find them on the TSXV under QU.V and on the OTC under QUF. Again, all of that's in the description below and the pinned comment. Because welcome to the future of media and marketing. They're creator-driven, youth-focused, and Viral, virally fueled. That's a little tough one for me there. But one thing that is got some fuel that we think is going to be their stock price. Here's trading around five cents at the time we recorded. Here we can look at their history. Every time it comes down into the supply zone, what shows up? buyers and you can notice what happened before now we're not going to make the case that the stock's going to jump up to 42 cents from five it would be fantastic if it did we're making a simple case that we're going to get down into the supply zone and go right up into the next one and you can see that's right around eight cents that's where there's a ton of volume profile that's where the sellers have been at before and so we're making the case here just a simple move between supply zones could be as upwards of a 60 percent move if it breaks out of that well as you can see clearly sky's the limit with QU. And we are what's relevant to young customers. QU Media operates in India and the United States offering innovative advertising opportunities to some of the top global brands. In India, their channels are curate, produce, and distribute premium content via VOD for cable and satellite television among OTT, mobile, and smart TV-based platforms that reach over 100 million young Indians weekly. Their India-based influencer marketing division is among India's leading influencer and social marketing platforms connecting brands with influencers and their target audience. In the U.S., QU creates and manages influencer marketing campaigns for major film studios, game publishers, and brands. It's founded and created by industry veterans from Lionsgate, MTV, Disney, Sony, QU's media, millennial, and Gen Z-focused content reaches more than 1 billion customers around the world every month and they affect over a thousand brands they reach over a billion people and i've had the pleasure of talking to their founder their ceo and co-founder kurt marvis and he is the ex-president of lion gate digital really cool guy I had a great conversation with him and we think that their stock price based on what they're doing is poised to head higher here we can look at the momentum you see it's coming down here it's around 43 on the rsi so it's not quite near oversold but it's been trending sideways looking to try to make a move higher notice the macd start Starting to bottom out that's a signal we look for it's in the supply zone all we're seeing now is the next move of buyers to come in drive it up look for eight cents that's your initial target 60 percent move to the upside on qu and here we can see as we zoom in to the 90-day chart you can see it's got to break through six cents once you get through there the headwinds are all the way at eight cents check them out on the tsxv at qu.v and on the otc at qf now keep in mind for any sponsor any company we feature on the show you have no obligation to purchase their stock be sure to do your own research before placing any trades and with that i'm steve van meter thanks for watching thanks for being fans bye now